All right, guys, so this will be a video on how to install running boards, also called side steps, on a Toyota RAV4. I'm using a 2021 XLE model, all wheel drive, uh, gas model. So it should be pretty much the same for all of them. Um, first thing, I downloaded the instructions from Toyota. Uh, if you need a link to those, I'll include it in the description. And if for some reason you can't find it, uh, leave me a, a message in the comments and I'll email you the uh, PDF of these. That way you can either keep it on your phone or computer or just print it out, whatever is going to work best for you. So the next thing, of course, is uh, this isn't going to be a, a complete um, start to finish video just because it's pretty hot out. Um, I'm underneath the carport, but right now it's about 100 degrees, so I'm taking pretty frequent breaks. So it's it's going to take me a little bit longer than it might take you if you're working in cooler weather or inside an air-conditioned garage where you can just do it straight through. Um, I would say probably you know put aside maybe a, a couple hours for each side. I know some people can get it done a lot faster. Um, you know, not saying that they don't know what they're doing. Certainly if they're, you know, familiar with working on vehicles and especially if you've done this install before, I'm sure it can be a lot faster. Um, otherwise, you know, there, there's a saying um, and basically the saying is there's never time to do it right, but there's always time to do it twice. So we don't want to fall into that. Let's do it right the first time. Um, I have some tools laid out here. The install instructions from Toyota do list all the tools that you're going to need. Uh, one of the things that I do want to comment on, um, you know, just briefly is if you don't have some of the basic tools like a torque wrench or the body removal tools, um, and that's this right here, um, you know, it pretty much looks like a flathead screwdriver, um, but it is in fact a removal tool. And uh, this right here is also a trim removal tool. You know, you can get away with not having that stuff, but it really makes it a whole lot easier if you do have the right tools. Um, as far as the torque wrench, you know, you can buy those at Harbor Freight or Walmart. They're pretty inexpensive, uh, 20 to $40. Um, also, most auto parts places like AutoZone, um, O'Reilly's, you know, the various auto stores. A lot of them do have a rent-a-tool program. I'm not sure if they do that with the body trim removal tools. Um, but, you know, if not, I'll leave a link also to where I bought mine. It was, I don't know, like a 30 or 40-piece kit on Amazon for like $25. It was, it was pretty inexpensive, but like I said, I'll leave a link to that. Um, so yeah, so we're going to go ahead and get started. And uh, like I said, uh, put aside a couple hours just to make sure that you have enough time. All right, so one of the things that you definitely want to do is... You know, after you've ordered all your parts, uh, make sure that you have every, everything that you're supposed to. Uh, nothing worse than getting, you know, halfway through or three quarters of the way through. Then you realize you can't finish it because they didn't include everything. You know, so Now, the, the one part that I didn't do, um, because, I, of course, I was being pretty cautious, um, I didn't use the tape here on the first step. Um, you know, certainly it can't hurt to do that. Uh, like I said, I, I just didn't. Um, I do have the tape, but I didn't really think it was necessary. So the uh, the first part here is going to say remove the, uh, the retaining bolt and the push pin from the rear wind deflector. All right. And so I'm going to show you guys where that is. We are starting on the uh, driver side. Um, the instructions actually say to start on the passenger side, but then halfway through, they actually go to the driver's side. Um, I'll point that out once we get there, you know, because if you're following along with the pictures, it's, it's just a little confusing. Again, it wasn't a huge thing, but uh, you know, it, it's nice if, if everything's laid out, you know, 100% correct. Uh, my car is pretty dirty. You can see all the, the dust right there, but I do live, uh, you know, about a mile and a half drive down a dirt road. So it kicks up a lot of, a lot of dirt and a lot of dust. All right. So the rear wind deflector is going to be right here. And so you can see some parts of it right there. All right. And that's just going to be a 10 millimeter bolt. And they actually talk about that. And then there's another pin. And once I get that pin, um, I'll, I'll go ahead and take care of that. All right, guys. And the 
the other push pin on that back. Let me see if I can. Oh. All right, guys. So the second push pin after and this is, of course, right in front of the rear wheel. And we'll come back a little bit just so you guys see. All right, so you're going to all the way underneath here. And then if you come around, you try and focus. All right, so we're looking at right here. And there, hopefully that's a little bit little bit easier to see right here and you're just going to use a trim removal tool to pop that out see if I can do this with one hand I think I'm actually gonna let's see I can't hold the camera and do this at the same time, but I'll show you what the pin looks like once it's out. All right, guys, so that's what the pin looks like. And it just pushes out and just spreads these apart. So it's, it's pretty easy. You can get in there with, like I said, a, it's preferred to use a you know tool for this, but a flathead screwdriver on this part works just as well. And I actually removed the, uh, the entire guard, but you do not have to remove that. You can actually leave this clip just sitting in there and uh, now we'll go ahead and go on to the next step. All right, so the next step says remove the bottom push pin and retain. Release the front mud guard if present. Remove two screws from the front mud guard and retain. Uh, one thing I also um, wanted to point out, uh, one of the things that I picked up, you can find these again at Walmart. Um, you know, not that I'm trying to promote Walmart or anything, but everybody usually has one pretty nearby. So I picked up a bunch of these medicine bags, they're uh, pill bags, and uh, I don't know, they're like 50 for a dollar or 100 for a dollar or something like that. But I picked these up and I label them, and that way at every step, I can put the screws from each step. That way nothing gets mixed up. Um, just, you know, again, makes it easier. All right guys, so here we are at the front of the car and I do have the mud guards and you'll see there's a uh, screw there and a screw there. It's, all right, and that's a 10 millimeter. You can use a Phillips head, but I'm gonna use a 10 millimeter. If you go all the way underneath, hopefully you guys can see that right there. And you'll see another retaining clip. And again, you use a, uh, either a flat head or a, uh, you know, the actual tool for it. Remove that and um, this top pin up here, you do not have to remove that, it just hangs. So we'll uh, go ahead and do that, and I'll show you what it looks like. All right guys, so this is what the pin looks like. And you can see this one's actually just got a couple of grooves in it. All you would do is you'll stick your uh, removal tool in there. Uh, I'll set this up on a tripod to show you guys, and this way you know how to actually pop these out if you've never done it before. All right guys, so if you've never taken one of these clips out before, it's really easy. All you're gonna do is you're gonna just push in underneath here. And then just twist and it just pops right up. And that way these pieces can compress, right? Oh, sorry. These pieces right here can compress. You can see they're spread out. And when you push that pin back in, it'll push them back out and that's what keeps it in. See already that's pretty loose and that just pulls off to the side and you just let it hang there. Now we'll move on to the next step. Um, so you'll have these two screws, two screws in the in the push pin, and I'm gonna put those inside one of my labeled bags. We'll be right back. All right, so the next step says to uh, disengage the front trim, pull outwards to disengage, disengage the, the white pin. And uh, so, then of course you can see you remove and retain the front two push pins. And that's, uh, that's actually really easy. Let me uh, pull out 
pull this out of the tripod. All right, so right here, you can see that's the front door. I'm just gonna pull on this. And you can see that white pin right there, and that's all that was. So you don't wanna use excessive force, just enough to pop it out. Again, it can just sit like that. And then the other two pins they're talking about, there's a, we're gonna go underneath. And so we're looking at this right here, this right here, and you can see that it's got that little slot. And I don't know if I can do this with one hand and film, but I'll give it a try. And then we're just gonna pull this out. And it just pulls right out. And do the same thing with the next one. All right, and next step says I remove and retain the two screws from the rocker molding. There's one, this is the back tire. And you can see where that hole is right here. And there's a screw in there. And that is just a Phillips head. We're gonna come up here to the front. And of course, there's another one right here. Again, just a Phillips head screwdriver. All right, guys, so the next step says place thumbs on front two plugs, pull the rocker molding outboard to release the plastic clips inside the panel. Re repeat for the remaining six plugs and retain all of them. So this part's a little bit more difficult. Um, and here's some of the plugs. I, I've already done the, the passenger side, um, but here's the plugs that they're talking about. And this, this top part's pretty flexible. So we're gonna go underneath and I'm gonna kind of show you guys uh, what to expect here. All right. So you can see those are the plugs we pulled out. Now we're looking at all of these. And they pretty much go all the way down. Um, so what you're gonna do is you can wear gloves or, or not. Um, you're basically going to put, trying to figure out how the best way to do this is. So you can put your thumbs there and all you're doing is pulling on this part right here, this little lip right here to pull these out. Now I had a few where this little lip basically flexed and this just pulled out leaving the plug inside. That's really not a big deal because you can get the plugs out afterwards. You know, if they come out with the rocker panel, that's fine. If not, again, it's really not a big deal. They go back in just fine. None of them broke. Um, you know, you're, you're going to reuse two of them. So, you know, and chances of, of all of them breaking are, are pretty low. So we'll go ahead and uh, I'll set this on a tripod just so you guys can hear what it sounds like. And, uh, you know, see how much pressure is needed. And at least, you know, it'll kind of give you an idea. All right, guys. So... We're gonna go ahead and remove those uh, first two clips on the on the rocker panel. Again, you don't really have to put your thumbs on it, but you know, I figured it's Toyota, they probably know more about what to do. If I can get a grip on this one. kind of hear those pop so I'll get back under there with the camera just so you guys can see and all right. so you can see some of them are like that one stayed in you can see that but again it's not difficult to get it's actually easier once it's like that all right, I'm gonna finish this up and then we'll go to the next step. All right, guys, so the next step says, 
completely remove the rocker molding by releasing all nine plastic clips inside the panel. And uh, again, it's pretty easy. I'm going to start by using the uh, trim tool. So I'm just going to slide this in. Let me see if I can set this up. gonna move up until I get to the pin and just pull that out you can see it's just that plastic pin and I'm just gonna move back until I get to the next one and so that's all you're gonna do all the way down all right guys and the next thing they tell you is to Completely remove the rocker panel. Um, sorry, we just did that step. Uh, pull the sill molding towards the front of the vehicle to release it from the wheel arch molding. And says, do not pull on the rear fender. Pulling it may damage the double-sided tape. So apparently, um, at some point, and yeah, I bought this vehicle new. The only people who worked on it was a dealer. But you can see some of the double-sided tape had already been a you know, little bit of damage. Um, again, that's not a big deal because I have double-sided tape, but So you just flex this piece right here and you can kind of Let me see if I can set this up and show you guys All right, so you would just want to kind of flex it in the middle. Oops, sorry about that Flex it in the middle to disengage this from here once that's off, all right, that piece will just kind of drop down. And then you're gonna pull it backwards to release it from the front. And you can hear that drop. And then just remove this whole piece. And you can see a lot of these came out, but some of them stayed in. Again, it's fairly easy to get those out. Once you get under there, just uh, you know, either use your body removal tool or flathead if you want, and uh, just pop those out. They'll come right out, it's pretty easy. All right guys, so the next step, now you're gonna have to get into your hardware bag and it tells you to uh, install those. Space nut onto the anchor bolt. It says ensure the correct spacer, spacer nut orientation. So the embossment towards the anchor plate. And on mine, um, all of that was already done. So here's what we're looking at. And you can see that little lip right there. Just make sure it's pointing towards this part and not down, because this will actually go into the holes that are underneath the vehicle. And so what we're looking at, so once you have all of these done, you're gonna insert these. This is gonna face towards the inside part of the vehicle. All right, and I'm gonna try and get that. And uh, you don't wanna tighten them all completely. The two middle holes, you are not gonna use. And then it tells you to torque it to 33 foot pounds. All right, and again, that's something, you know, um, again, if you don't have a, a torque wrench, um, I would probably suggest buying one or maybe just rent one out or see if a friend has one that you can borrow. Um, you know, again, that old saying of, uh, you know, never time to do it right, but always time to do it twice. Um, again, we don't want to do that and you don't want to damage anything because either, you know, you didn't tighten them enough or you over tightened them. Um, you know, so like I said, it'd be well worth a little bit of extra money or, you know, renting one out or borrowing one. All right, so we'll get underneath the vehicle. All right. And you can see all the holes here. So this, uh, let's see if I can point, is of course the uh, door. So going this way is uh, into the vehicle. And so we're gonna come over to the first hole. It's right here. And again, you have that long part. 
and that's going to face towards the center of the vehicle. So you're going to put that in and we're just going to snug this up. So we might need two hands to do this. All right. And that embossed part, as you can see, you can hear it click, fits inside that hole perfectly. And so you're going to do all six, like I said, you're going to skip the two middle holes. So three, the first three and the last three. And uh, I'll come back for the next step. All right, guys, so at this point, um, you can see they're all installed. They've been torqued down with the torque wrench. And uh, I don't know if you guys can see that. All right. So we're about the halfway point because from now it's all uh, installing so we're not removing anything now we're putting everything back so you can see it says retrieve the new rocker panel and uh, install it in the reverse order obviously it's pretty easy um, these rocker panels are marked left hand and right hand and so I'm gonna grab one and I'll show you guys where to find that marking and um, then we'll start uh, reinstalling everything all right guys, so here's the, uh, the new rocker panel and you can see it's got the, the cutouts. Um, I know there's a bunch of videos where they, they show people modifying them and just you know making these cutouts and that, that is in fact the only difference is the cutouts. Um, you know these cost $23 each from the dealer and given the you know uh, some of the videos it seemed like the guys did a pretty good job on doing the cutouts but some of them you know where you might have a little slip you know, or, or something happens. Um, for me, it was worth it just to spend the extra, you know, I mean, I'm already spending, you know, right about $400 um, in my case, a um, little bit less for the uh, running boards and the extra, you know, $23 each and they discounted them for me since I was buying everything together. Um, you know, so it was, you know, right about 40 bucks, um, which really isn't a lot, especially, you know, Again, to make sure that I don't have to actually cut these out. I'm not, you know, maybe, uh, you know, putting a deep cut into the metal or anything, you know, where potentially that, that may start some rust or, you know, worse, you know, um, I know everybody likes to be careful and everybody's, you know, has a lot, some people may have a lot of experience, you know, but accidents happen and you may hit a grippy spot of the plastic or the metal or something and it slips and, you know, then you're yelling for your wife to bring you to the emergency room so in order to avoid all that um, I went ahead and just purchased these and so it, you guys see it has the arrow facing up um, and it gives you all the, uh, the part numbers and everything and you can see that says left hand so and uh, this is a little bit different than the other one I had because that, that marking was in over here but they will have it marked on the inside, whether it's left hand or right hand. Um, so we'll go ahead and install this. And again, it's the opposite. You know, it's basically now you're just putting everything back together. Uh, if you need any help with that, you know, refer back to the instructions and just follow it backwards. You know, you're going to put the back end in first. And, uh, you know, so this part will slide in, you know, right there. And then you'll go ahead and, uh, you know, just... Make sure these tabs are lined up with those holes right there and just go ahead and uh, snap them in and we'll be back uh, for the next step. All right guys, and uh, just wanted to make sure that I covered this part. All these plugs that had come out earlier, so you're gonna reuse two and they're just going in the two center holes. And so that's, uh, you, you know, you can't really go wrong in this step. Cause you can see there's only two spots. All the other ones are taken up by those bolts. So you just want to pop these back in. Again. It's just really hard to do with one hand. <laughs> right, let me switch hands, guys. I'm just going to pop that back in. That's it. Just push it in. Do the same thing with the other one. All right, guys. So now that the rocker panel is installed, we're gonna move on to the next step, which is uh, actually putting the main part of the uh, running boards or the side steps. Uh, one thing of note, um, if you guys labeled the bags, 
Um, so the order that I did the bags is one, which is the back, four, which is the screws, three, which is the little um, push pins underneath the front of the rocker panel, and then two, which is the mud guard up here. Um, you can do it that way, or you can, you know, I don't think the order of this part of it, you know, as far as reinstalling the rocker panel, it doesn't really matter all that much. Um, but so like I said, we're gonna move on to the next step. On here, it says install the right hand. In this case, of course, left hand is the driver side, right hand is passenger side. So we're gonna work on the left hand. Uh, one thing of note, so they do say install the right hand, but the picture actually shows left hand. Um, you know, that, that was one of those things that threw me off just, just a little, not a huge amount. The extrusions, um, as they call them, the aluminum parts, you'll see it has that big square cutout. Um, those are not, not marked. So, you know, you're pretty much going off of the pictures um, to know which is left hand and right hand. Um, but those big cutouts go towards the rear of the vehicle. Um, you know, so like I said, the rocker panels themselves are marked. The extrusions are not, just remember that large hole should go towards the rear of the vehicle. And uh, let me grab that and I'll show you guys. All right, guys, so here's the, uh, the main piece right here. And again, you can see it's got that cut out right there. That's going to go towards the rear of the vehicle. Um, if you have somebody to help you with this step, it, it definitely makes it easier. But, I mean, it is aluminum, so it's not really required. It's all of these. Sorry, right here. So you'll see there's three. And then there's a pretty good gap. And then there's three more. And that's going to go... On these pieces that we installed earlier um, what I did to make it easier for me was you know I lined them all up held it from the middle and then pushed it up had one hand holding it there and then just threaded those two nuts on with the washers um, you know just so I could get that started and of course you're gonna use the uh, provided nuts and bolts or nuts and washers that are in the bag um, in my bag they were just loose I mean, they're, they're the only black ones that are in there. So it's uh, these right here. And so I'm going to install that, and then we'll move on to the next step. All right, guys, one thing I did want to bring up is if you've never used a torque wrench, um, in this case, it's just a click-type torque wrench. Um, I'm going to show you what it sounds like first. If you guys can hear that little click. So you want to, you know, obviously take your time in doing that. And it's got a dial here where you can, I don't know if you guys can see all that. You basically dial it into the amount of torque that you're needing. Uh, in this particular instance, it's 18 foot pounds for these right here. So I'm going to finish that up and then we'll move on to the next step. All right, so. Now that, uh, again, once that's completely installed now, so the next spot is just install six plastic clips and the two U-nuts onto the plastic step. So here's the, uh, the step. Of course, it's upside down. So there's your step and your clips are these blue clips right here in this bag. And you can see, so this part, that bottom part is just gonna slide in right there. All right, sorry, just top one, and you hear it just kind of lock in. So you're gonna do that to all of them, except for this spot right here, which is towards the back, and you're gonna install this U-nut. And they show you which way it goes, to make sure you do it the right way, but I'll show you again. So this nipple right there is gonna go facing the main part of the board, so. And that's how it's going to install. And I'll be back once I put these in and we'll go to the next step. We're almost done. All right, guys. So then it says align the step hooks with the aluminum extrusion holes. Install the hooks on the plastic step into the large holes. Align the clips. Press down. This part's actually super easy. And if you've made it this far in installing these, then you're pretty much done. And you probably don't need any more direction, but you have these little hooks sorry right here and those are going to go 
into this part and I'll just slide down in between there. These, sorry, these, all your blue clips will align with these holes on the outer edge. And so just take your time making sure everything's lined up. And uh, let's see, maybe I can do it this way. Makes it easier to close the door. Uh, just close both doors, make it easier. You'll see that that's got a little bit of a cutout there. That's for the rear door entry. Front door has to remain open. <laughs> All right. Now you want to just check underneath, make sure everything's lined up good. You can see not how well that's showing up, but if you look through, sorry, looking through, And so you can see that all those hooks are down and you just want to take your time and line those up with those holes. You know, and you can push it a little bit just to make sure that it's going down in there. Don't obviously want to force it in case they're not lined up. And you'll feel it kind of drop down once it's lined up. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and get all of them lined up and before I click it down, I'll Come back to the video all right guys so underneath what i just want to show you so you can see that's at the very front that's the first one this is going to be one of the screws and hopefully you guys can see that basically you just want to make sure that all of your all of your little blue tabs are kind of poking through a little bit before you push it down and that way you're not going to break anything and once you push it down, you'll hear them. And you can hear all of them snap through. You want to make sure that they're all clicked through. And then the last thing you'll do is you'll put those two screws in. And then we're going to wrap up on the install. All right. And I know it says the last step is uh, reinstall the front trim where that white plastic clip was, but uh, we had already done that. Um, sorry, I'm trying to get it to focus. All right. And then reinstall the mud guard. But um, again, you know, that part was probably already done. Uh, it really doesn't make any difference you know, as far as I could tell, um, you know, that, that particular part of it. Um, and you're going to remove the protective film, which is that film right there and of course when you remove it you'll see a nice uh, brushed stainless steel appearance underneath it and then the last part is uh, attach the jack warning label um, you know which is always good to do just in case you know um, maybe you forgot or you know maybe uh, you know you, you don't want to change the tire you call for help or you know maybe it's a family member who doesn't know how to work on cars and uh, you know they maybe flag somebody down to help them change a tire. You have somebody who's, you know, trying to do a good deed and gets out the jack, puts it underneath. The next thing you know, your side steps are all messed up because there was no warning label and they weren't paying attention, you know, to the uh, side steps. Um, you know, granted, if they weren't paying attention to the side steps, they probably weren't paying attention to the warning label either. But, you know, it's, it's again, it's just nice to have it done correctly and make sure everything's done the right way. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope it's helped you out. Um, you know, if you're going to install these yourselves, hopefully this was useful to you. Or, you know, maybe you decided that it's not going to be uh, something you want to do and you're going to maybe have the dealer install it. But um, hopefully, you know, it's provided some 
some helpful information to you. Um, if it has, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel. And again, if you uh, have any questions or unable to locate uh, the manual or any parts that you need or anything like that, um, you know, just uh, send me a message or just, you know, comment, um, you know, in the comment section and, uh, you know, I'll, I'll send you a message and I can get, uh, you know, that emailed over to you or, 